Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. The 2022 computer science free response questions were released on Friday, so I thought we'd go ahead and work through them, see if we understand what they're asking and how the College Board may grade them. So let's take a look at problem number one. Problem one says the question involves simulation of play and scoring of a single player video game. And in this game, a player attempts to complete three levels, and a level is represented by the level class. So we have a level class that's going to have a, a function called goal reach, which is going to return a boolean. And we have a function called get points, which is going to re return an int. And every time we play a game, we're going to have three levels, level one, level two, level three. We're going to have a function called is bonus, which is going to give us a true if the game is a bonus, returns false otherwise. We're going to have a play method, which is going to simulate playing the game and updating all the game data. So it's going to update these three levels. We have a function called get score, which is going to return an int. And this is what we're going to be doing in part A. And then in part B, we're going to play the game many times, which is going to simulate the game a certain number of times and return the highest score. So that's what we need to do in this problem. So let's take a look at part A. They want us to write the get score method, which returns the score for the most recently played game. Each game consists of three levels. The score of the game is computed using the following helper methods. We have is bonus, which is going to give us true if this is a bonus game. We have goal reached, which tells us if we've reached the goal, it's going to give us true. If we haven't, it's going to give us a false. And we have get points, which is going to tell us the number of points recorded on each level. And level one points are only earned if level one goal is reached. Level two points are only earned if both level one and level two goals are reached. Level 3 points are earned only if the goals for all three levels are reached. The score of the game is just the sum of the points for each level, 1, 2, and 3. And if the game is a bonus game, the score for the game is tripled. So we have these methods that we can use. These methods to get stuff from the level, these from the game, uh, and these are our instance variables in the game. So I'm going to write my get score method. So I've got public int get score. And so what we're going to do is, of course, keep in mind, because we're returning an int, I need to declare an int. I need to initialize it. And I need to make sure that I return my int. That's going to be one point right there, just making sure that I'm returning the variable that they're asking. They're asking me for an int. I need to make sure I'm giving them an int. Also, I need to make sure that I check to see if level one is true, then I'm going to want to add the score to it. If it's not true, notice, of course, I get zero score out of it. So I need a conditional. I need if, and I need to ask level one. I need to ask it if the goal was reached. So if level one dot goal reached. If that's true, then I want to do stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my score and add whatever the score was for level one. So if I completed level one but didn't complete level two, I only get the 200 points. So I'm going to say just score plus gets level one dot get points. But then I want to check, okay, I've checked level one, but I, remember that I only get the level two points if they complete both level one and level two completely. Notice here when this was false, I didn't get this 100 points. I only got the 200 points. So I'm actually going to check inside this if, if level two dot goal reached. Then I'm going to add my score to level two. So score is going to add to itself level two dot get points. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to check if level three dot get a uh, goal reached. So in other words, if I reach my goal for level three, then again, I'm going to want to score and add to it 
level three dot get points. And I'm going to close for that if, I'm going to close for that if, and I'm going to close for that if. But now I need to take care of this is bonus situation. So if is bonus, then I'm going to want to make sure that I take my score and multiply it by three. Because the idea is that if this is a bonus game, then the score is going to be tripled. So if it's true, we get that triple. And if it's false, notice we don't get the triple. This one was true, so we get the triple. This one is false, but we didn't get any points, but there's also no triple going on here. So I need to make sure I initialize my variable and return it. That's probably going to be a point there. I need to check each one of these goals and add the points appropriately. So that's probably going to be a point for each one of these checks. One point for checking the original goal and then a point for also doing this check within a check, making sure that I'm checking both of these at the same time. You could do this with an AND statement, but I prefer doing it like this with nested IF statements. They're both going to get correct. They're both going to give you the main idea. And then, of course, you're probably going to have one more point for checking this is bonus at the end and making sure you multiply that correctly. So I'm looking at this being four out of the nine points for part A. Let's take a look at part B. Part B says write the play many times method, which simulates the play of num games and returns the highest game score earned. For example, if four plays of the game are simulated, it's going to play the game four times. We're going to get four scores. And I want to return the highest of those. Play of the game is simulated using this method play. I'm going to call this one time following my multiple consecutive calls to get score. I'm only going to get to get score of that particular game. So I really only want to call get score once, this get score here. Complete this. Assume that get score works as intended. You must call play. You must call get score in order to receive full credit. So keep in mind that if I'm going to have this public int play many times and I'm going to have an int num here. Num is going to be the number of games that I have to play. So I'm definitely going to want to set up some type of loop. But again, remember, I'm, I'm, re I'm returning an int. I need to declare that int. So int score is zero. And I want to make sure that I'm returning my score. Okay, that's going to be a point right there, just making sure that I'm declaring, initializing, and returning some variable because I'm supposed to return an int. I need to go through a loop. So I'm going to have to have some loop control variable. I'm going to have to go through this many times. I'm going to go ahead and do a for loop. So I've got four, int i gets zero, i less than num, i plus plus. So this is just going to go through a certain number of times, the number of times they told me to play, and I'm going to do this process. This loop right here is probably going to be worth another point, making sure you do it the appropriate number of times. And they specifically say you must call play. Remember this play method here is going to do everything that we need to play the game. It's going to adjust level one, level two, and level three so that our get score works appropriately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call play. So I have to do that. That's probably going to be a point right there, making sure that you call play once for every time you go through the loop. And now I need to get the score and see if the score is bigger than my current score. So I'm going to say if get score is greater than my current score, then I want to say score is going to get whatever is in get score. And this is why they made that distinction here, that multiple consecutive calls to get score is going to return the score earned in the single simulated play of the game. Get score only gets a score. It doesn't change the values. It just recalculates the values. Now, I could 
initialize a value something like current score and just say int current score is get score and do the same test but with current score as a variable. It doesn't matter if I do this with the uh, conditional here or if I do it with uh, if I do it with the conditional with the function call or a conditional with the variable. But we're looking at probably a point for this comparison and a point for this assignment correctly. And that's going to end the if statement. This ends the for statement. And then I return my score. Every time I go through this loop, it's going to play the game. And if I got something bigger than I had, I'm going to change it. So that's problem number one. Now let's take a look at problem two. Problem two says the book class is used to store information about a book. A partial book class definition is shown. And we've got our class book. We have a string title and double price and instance variables here. We have a constructor given a book title and a book price is going to create a book with that title and that price. We have an accessor to get the title. We have an accessor for book information. We're going to write a class called textbook, which is a subclass of book. This textbook is also going to have an addition number, which is a positive integer used to identify different versions of the book. Get book info is going to return a string that also includes the addition information. In other words, I'm going to see not just the title and the price, but I'm also going to see the addition. And that's not on this picture, but it was on the test. It says information about the book K must be maintained in the book class. Information about the addition must be maintained in the test textbook class which means I need to have this addition variable in my textbook class. I need to make sure I declare it. I need to make sure that I use it. I need to make sure it's private, just like these instance variables up here are private. And it says the textbook class contains an additional method can substitute for, which returns true if the textbook is a valid substitute for another textbook and returns false otherwise. The current textbook is a valid substitute referenced by the parameter can substitute for, if the two textbook objects have the same title, and if the addition of the current textbook is greater than or equal to the addition of the parameter. And they gave some examples. I don't have it shown here, but you can see that in the document. All right, so the first thing I need to do is I need to create a class. So I'm going to create public class textbook. And because it is a subclass of book, I need to make sure that this extends book. Okay. And inside here, this is where I'm going to have my class. And this header by itself is probably worth a point. They told us that I need to keep track of the addition inside the textbook class. So I'm going to have to create a private int called addition. And that probably is going to be a point right there, just for having that private instance variable keeping track of the addition. I have a constructor for book, but I need a constructor for textbook that also passes not just the title and the price, but also the addition. So I'm going to have a, a public constructor, so public textbook. And it's going to have three parameters. I'm going to have the book title. I'm going to have the double book price. And I'm also going to have int book edition. Because in order to create a textbook, I'm going to need all three pieces of that information. So for this constructor, just writing that header is probably going to be worth a point. What goes inside the constructor is important because first thing I need to do is I need to make sure I make a book. And then the second thing I need to do is I need to make sure I fill in this variable for addition. So I'm going to call on the previous constructor. So I'm going to say super. Remember, super is how I call the constructor if I'm extending a class. I'm going to call super, and I'm going to pass the book title. And I'm going to pass the book price. And that makes me a book with that book title and that book price. And now I need to say, hey, my addition is going to be whatever this book edition parameter that we got set. So my addition 
equals book edition. Now, some people like to call the variable addition to have the parameter be addition. In that case, you can say this dot addition equals addition. That would also work. And that's all that I need. Remember, the purpose of a constructor is to initialize our instance variables. Our super is going to take care of our book title and our book price using the existing constructor, which I don't care how they do it. But the book addition has to be done in a certain way. They gave me a book addition, and I made sure that my book addition got assigned to that variable. So the contents of this constructor, including calling super, is probably going to be worth a point. Now I need to take care of everything else that they're asking. I need to make sure that they have some type of accessor for this uh, function. I need to make sure that I can get the addition. So I'm going to have a public int get addition. And I need to make sure that that just simply returns addition. Okay, They gave me a variable, and they're going to ask me later, hey, what edition is this book? And I need to be able to tell them what edition it is. That's probably going to be worth a point. I need to take care of this get book info. I need to overwrite this method because instead of just having a title and a price, I also have an addition. So I'm going to have to make sure I return a string. So public string get book info. And so I'm going to make sure that I return what they gave me. In other words, I'm going to return a string, and I'm going to have to build this string up. So I'm going to go ahead and call super get book info. In other words, I'm going to call the normal title and price, get it that way. And I'm going to concatenate it with a dash and my addition. And that's going to give me what I need. So I'm looking at a point for using this get book info and a point for making sure that I get this information, either by calling super or by calling the, um, the individual get accessors for get title. And uh, actually, I don't even have a get price, so get book info is really the only way I need to do it. Keep in mind that this is going to be super dot. I mistyped that, so let's go ahead and fix this. We can erase our mistakes. Come on. My pen is not reacting very well. I think I went too high. Come on, pen. All right, so I'm going to call super dot get book info. So I want to call get book info from the class that I'm extending, from book. And so we're probably going to be looking at a point for making sure that we get that information from the get book info by calling super. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I've got one other thing that I have to do, which is this can substitute for method. And this is going to be a Boolean. So I'm going to say public Boolean can substitute for. And I'm going to have some textbook called book two. And of course, we're going to get a point for writing that and a point for writing it correctly. So in, in order for me to substitute, I need to take a look at book two and make sure that my addition is bigger than their addition, and I need to make sure that we have the same name. So I'm going to return this dot title. Actually, can I do this dot title? I think I have to do this dot get title. Get title. And I can't do this dot title because title is private in book, and I am not book. I am textbook. So this dot get title 
dot equals book two dot get title. And, and I'm going to have to check my edition. So this dot get edition. is greater than or equal to book two's get edition. And that's going to be the end of that, and I'm going to get my final point by writing that. So keep in mind that when they ask you to write things, you need to make sure that you actually give what they're asking for. They said write a class, make sure that you write a class. What does a class need? A class needs a constructor. They tell you what methods they want. They want a get title. I mean, they, they excuse me, they want can substitute for, and they want a um, an accessor for get addition. Make sure that you have that in your class. That's how you're going to make sure you get at least some of the points. Even if your implementation isn't perfect, get those points that are for free. They're really important. Now let's take a look at problem three. On problem three, they're saying users of a website are asked to provide a review for the website at the end of each visit. Each review represented by an object on the review class consists of an integer reviewing indicating the user's rating and an optional string comment field. The comment field in a review ends with a period, an exclamation point, or a letter, or as a string of length zero if the user did not enter a comment. So I've got this review here. So I've got a constructor, I've got a get rating, I've got a get comment, and those are all instance variables. The review analysis class contains methods used to analyze the reviews provided by the user. We're going to write two of these methods. So I've got an array called all reviews. I've got a constructor, which I don't care about. I'm going to have to give the average rating of the review. And I'm going to have to contain formatted versions of selected user comments as described in Part B, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. So for Part A, I'm going to have to write the review analysis method called getAverageRating. This is going to return the average rating, the arithmetic mean, in other words, adding everything up and dividing by the number, of all the reviews in all reviews. So for example, I've got a 4, plus 3 is 7, plus 5 is 12, Plus, 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 3 is 17, and if I take 17 and divide by 5, I get the 3.4. All I want is to get a double out of this, and I'm assuming that none of these are null, so I'll never have a null pointer exception. All reviews contains at least one review. So I'm going to have to return a double. So if I have public double get average rating, Again, the first thing I know is that, hey, they want a double, I need a double. So I'm going to have double average gets 0.0, .0 and I need to make sure that I return average. So how do I find an average? I need to add them all up, which means I need to go through this array and I need to add up all of the review values, the ratings, and then divide by the number that I have. And I'm always going to be good to divide because I'm always going to have at least one. And I'm always going to have a rating come out of it so I don't have to worry about a null pointer. So I need to make sure I go through the list, so I'm going to have to set up a loop. So for int i gets 0, i is less than, I need to uh, all reviews dot length i plus plus and I'm going to go through and add everything together. I'm going to go ahead and use this as an accumulator variable. Everything's going to be added together in here and then I'm going to want to say is that take average and I want to divide by all reviews dot length. So that's going to take care of it. I'm going to add everything together and then divide by the number of reviews that I have. All of reviews dot length, the length of this array is the number of reviews that I'm dealing with. 
So I'm going to go through this array, and I'm going to get every rating out of that array and add it to average. So I'm going to say average is going to get added to it. I'm going to have to take the array of all reviews. I'm going to have to go into that particular box, and I'm going to have to get the rating. And that's it, really. The thing is, I want to go into the array. I want to get the rating. I want to add it to the average. This loop is going to add up all these numbers. It's going to add up the 4, the 3, the 5, the 2, and the 3. It's going to give me 17. And I want to take that 17.0, because this is a double, and divide by the length. And that should give me a decimal average. Because I was starting with a double. Everything's promoted to a double. And that's all that I need. So looking at a point for declaring the variable and initializing it and returning it, a point for making sure that we go through every review, making sure that we get the rating correctly and add it to some accumulator variable, and a point for actually calculating the average. So probably four points on this problem. So that's part A. Let's take a look at part B. So on part B, they want us to write the review analysis method collect comments, which is going to collect and format only comments that contain an exclamation point. The method's going to return an array list of string objects containing copies of user comments for all reviews that contain an exclamation point formatted as follows. So notice, this has an exclamation point, it gets included. This doesn't, and it doesn't show up down here. This does, and it does show up, this doesn't and it doesn't. This has no comment, and so it doesn't. So I'm going to need to check each of these, see if any of these have an exclamation point in them. And if they do, add them to my array list. If they don't, then I'm just going to ignore them. So what I'm going to do is, of course, first, I need to make sure that I return an array list, which means I need to create an array list and I need to return an array list. So I'm going to start with public array list of template string. And this is called collect comments. And it's just going to be passed nothing. This is a method is just going to return an array list. So I need to declare an array list of type string. And let's go ahead and call this comment list. So this is going to be a new array list of type string constructor. And then I'm going to want to make sure that I return comment list. And again, a point for making sure that we return what they're asking us to return. So now I need to go through the array. So again, I need a loop. So I'm going to do the same way that I did before. For int i gets 0, i is going to be less than uh, all reviews. dot uh, length i plus plus. And I'm going to go through here and accumulate what I need to accumulate. So what I need to do is I need to go through each of these elements and see, do they have a comment and do they have an exclamation point in the comment? So I'm going to have an if statement here. I'm going to say if, and I'm going to say, hey, all reviews sub i dot, I want to get the comment, dot, I want to look at the length and make sure that that's greater than zero. And once I know that it's longer than zero characters, which kind of takes care of that case, now I need to take a look at all reviews sub i dot get comments dot index of 
and I want to look for the index of an exclamation point. And I want to make sure that that's greater than negative 1. So what this does is this goes through, it gets the comment and looks for the index of the exclamation point. If it doesn't show up, I'm going to get a negative 1. If it does show up, then I'm going to get the number of the position where it's in. So this is in position 3, this is in position negative 1, this is in position 5, this is in position uh, 4, actually, not 3. And so it's going to tell me where it is, and as long as it's not negative 1, negative 1 means that it doesn't show up. Anything other than negative 1, anything bigger than negative 1, that's good, and I want it. And if I want it, then I'm going to want to add stuff to my list. So I'm going to do comment list. Dot add. And I'm going to add the number, a hyphen, and the comment. So I'm going to have to get this number, which is all reviews sub i dot get rating. I'm going to add a dash, because that notice each one of these outputs here has a dash separating the rating and the comment. And I'm going to add, this is all concatenation, string concatenation, add all reviews, sub i, dot, get comment. And all of this string, this whole big concatenated string is going to get added to comment list. So I'm going to need to make sure that I go through every element in that array. I'm going to need to make sure that the string has an exclamation point. I'm going to need to make sure that I concatenate everything correctly. And I'm going to have to make sure that I add it to the list correctly. And that's where the five points are going to come from on this problem. Now keep in mind, I'm telling you it's five points. This is what I think the five points are. If I was a grader, this is how I would grade it. Uh, College Board won't actually come to that decision until June, so you know take that with a grain of salt. But that's what I'm looking at for problem three. Now let's take a look at problem four. On problem four, it says the question involves a two-dimensional array of integers that represent a collection of randomly generated data a partial de declaration of the data is shown, in, and we will write two methods of the data class. So we have a private variable called max. We have an int array, a, a two-dimensional array called grid. And we're going to have to, one, fill everything in the grid using repopulate. That's part A. And on part B, we're going to have to count the increasing columns. It's going to go through the array and tell us how many of our columns are increasing in size. So for part A, we're going to have to write the repopulate method. It's going to go through our array, however many rows, however many columns our existing grid has. It's going to have to give us a value that is between 1 and max inclusive, a value that is divisible by 10, and a value that is not divisible by 100. And then I'm going to have to put it in that particular array cell. So remember that if I'm going through a two-dimensional array, I have to go through every row and I have to go through every column. So for public void repopulate, and of course the first thing you're going to notice is that because this is a void, I'm not returning anything. A void just performs a task. A void doesn't return a value. So I need to go through the entire array correctly. So I'm going to set up a for loop for int row gets 0. Row is going to be less than grid.length row plus plus. And that's going to go through every row, starting at the zero row and going to the very last row, which is the length of my array. And I'm going to do the same thing for columns. So for int call gets zero, call is going to be less than grid 
but I want to check that particular row, that particular row, not just I, but it's a, it's a row, dot length, call plus plus. And this is where I'm going to go through and do stuff. So what I need to do is I need to figure out some value that's between 1 and max inclusive, divisible by 10, and not divisible by 100. It's going to be a generated random value. Now I know that math.random will give me a number between 0 and 1. I need to get it to be a number between 0 and max inclusive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say int val is going to be uh, math dot random times max but keep in mind math dot random could give me a zero won't give me a one multiplying by max is going to give me something from zero to the number just below max I need to make sure it's one in max inclusive so I need to make sure that I add one to that now the problem is, I don't know if val is divisible by 10. I, want, I don't know if val isn't divisible by 100. So what I'm going to do is, actually, I think, I don't want to do this calculation yet. I think what I want to do is I want to go through this and start off at 0 and then work my way up. So let me erase this. All right, so I'm just going to start to say val is zero. And while I want to say val mod 100 is not equal to zero. Now, the thing is, if it's zero, the remainder when I divide by 100 is zero. So it's going to enter this loop and it's going to stay in this loop as long as I am divisible by 100. So if if, if this is true, actually, I want this to be equals, not, not equals. I want this to be equals. So while this is true, I want to go through this loop, and I want to go through and say, hey, I want val to be equal to, um, I want to take math.random, I'm going to want to multiply by, max, and I want to add 1. And I want to, want to take what I get from this and make sure that I cast it as an int, because otherwise I won't be able to store it in an int variable. This will be too big. This is a double. Multiplying gives me a double. Adding gives me a double. I need to cast it back down to an int. Once I do that, I need to make sure that I'm also taking care of this part here, that I'm divisible by 10. So what I can do is I can say val divide gets 10, and then val times gets 10. And what that's going to do is that's going to basically chop off the last digit and then replace the last digit with the zero. How you actually go through this isn't important, but what is important is that you start off with some type of random number. And if the number that I get out of this ends up being divisible by 100, well, then it's going to go through and recalculate this. But if it's not, then we can go down here and say, hey, take grid at that row and at that column and assign it val. And then go through the next iteration of this loop. So this is going to go through every row, it's going to go through every column, and at row and column, it's going to take whatever value is that we assigned. We're always going to start it at zero and go through this process, which is going to make sure it is random. It does divide by 10, but it's not divisible by 100. So that's what I'm looking at for part A. I'm going to probably have a point for successfully going through the two-dimensional array correctly. I'm going to have to have some type of point making sure that it's random. And one other point that's probably going to incorporate both the divisible by 10 
and the not divisible by 100. I think that's probably going to end up being one point there. And then finally, one point for successfully assigning it to the element in the grid. All right, so let's move on to our last part, part B. So on part B, they want us to write the count increase in calls method. This is going to return the number of columns in the grid that are increasing order. A column is considered to be increasing order if the element in each row after it is greater than or equal to the one in the previous row. So in other words, this 10, 20, 30, this is considered increasing. This 50, 40, 50 isn't. The 40, 20, 30 isn't. So I'm only going to get a 1 out of it. In this case, column from 10 to 220 counts, 540 to 450 doesn't. 440 to 440 does because they did say that it's going to count if it's greater than or equal to. And then the 440 to 190 does not. So there are two columns that are in increasing order. So again, because I have public, uh, count grid, count increasing calls, this is a type int, count increasing calls. So again, because I'm returning an int, I need to give it an int. I need to say uh, val gets zero. And I'm going to have to make sure that I return val. And again, that's probably going to be a point right there just for declaring the variable, initializing the variable, and returning a variable. I'm going to have to go through this grid, but I'm going to have to go through it column by column. So I'm going to have to start my loop. Int call gets zero. Call is going to be less than grid sub call dot length. Excuse me, grid sub. Actually, I want to do this. I want to go through and figure out how many columns I have. The number of columns I have is going to depend on that one particular row's length. Now, I don't care how many rows I have, but I will always have at least one element in there. So I'll always have one row. So I can ask row 0 what its length is, and then call increment. And then once I've done that, now I can go through row by row. So int row gets 0 row is less than grid.length, row plus plus. And now I can do my funky stuff. So I need to go through and I need to check from the top to the bottom, but I'm going to run into an issue here. I'm actually going to stick a minus one in here. And the reason is because I'm going to compare row zero with row one. I want to compare row 1 with row 2, but if I try and compare row 2 with row 3, I'm going to have a problem. So I want to stop one row short because I really only have two comparisons when I have three rows. If I have two rows, I only have one comparison. So I'm always going to have one less comparison than I would have rows. So I'm looking at a point for going through this array correctly making sure that I take care of that off by one error. To make sure that I'm taking care of that, I have to stop one row short. And now I need to go through, oh goodness, I need to go through and take care of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Boolean variable uh, is decreasing, and I'm going to start it off at true. Actually, I don't want to do that here. That's actually a bad place to do it because it's going to redo it for every row. I actually want to do that a little bit higher. So I'm going to erase this. I do apologize. My pen is misbehaving today, so I need to make sure I get that taken care of. So I'm going to have this for my outer loop, and I'm going to have my Boolean variable is decreasing gets true. 
And now I'm going to go through row by row. So for int row gets zero, row is less than grid.length row plus plus. And again with a minus one in there as well. I keep forgetting that. So I'm going to go through. Here's my val zero. My Boolean is true. And actually, I'm going to stop this just a little bit short. I don't want to close that just yet, and I'll explain why in just a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have just a very simple if. If I'm going to look at this particular element here and see, is it smaller than this element? So if my element at row call is greater than grid at row plus one call. In other words, if what I've got on the row above it is bigger than what I've got at the row below it, then I'm going to want to say is deck is now false. In other words, I'm going to go through this loop, and I, as soon as I find something that messes up, either from the first row to the second row, or from the second row to the third row, as soon as something messes up, I'm going to want to set that variable to false, and then I'm going to have a test that says if is deck is false, or I could say if is not is deck. Actually, I want to say if it's, actually, I just want to know if it's decreasing. Come on, Ben. If it's decreasing, then I can val plus plus. So I've got a point for initializing a variable and returning it, a point for going through the array correctly, a point for taking care of this off by one issue. A point for keeping track of if we are if we are descending or if we are decreasing in this row, and then a point for appropriately incrementing that variable. So this is going to be the five points that we would get for this problem. It's a little bit complicated. It's a little bit tricky because we kind of have to do it columns then row instead of rows then column. But keep in mind, one of the things that College Board likes to do, especially on these two-dimensional arrays, is to have you traverse them in non-traditional ways. We've talked about that in previous videos. And that's problem number four. I hope you did very well on the uh, AP uh, exam. And uh, once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.